All right, we're here with Randy, the president of Gearbox Studios, the developers of the game Borderlands. Uh, thanks for being with us today, Randy. Absolutely, happy to be here. Uh, we just got the chance to play it, and uh, so why don't you just start off uh, by telling us a little bit about the game, where you came up with the concept, what the game itself is. So Borderlands is, the be the basic idea behind Borderlands is to take uh, the fun of a shooter, the, the fun moment to moment fun, moving, aiming, shooting, dodging, knocking the guys down, and blend that with certain role-playing game elements about growth, and discovery and choice and like leveling up like getting experience and leveling up or choosing like which weapon to equip next and finding new loot and getting that new loot or developing your character in a lot of different ways based on the skill options you have right we wanted to add those elements to a shooter and we wanted to create a world and a, and a, and a set of characters and a situation that made that really really interesting so we have this world in borderlands this place called pandora which is a nasty place on the outskirts of space you don't want to go there unless you got a reason but these characters have a, a, an important reason. They are fortune hunters and there's a legendary vault that they believe inside has incredible alien fortune and incredible alien technology that whoever discovers this vault, it's believed, will become the most powerful, most wealthy person in the universe. So there's a race to see who can get there first and who can claim this thing. And you're one of these guys. So you're kind of like a cross between Mad Max and Indiana Jones. And if you're like Indiana Jones, the vault is like your lost ark. And along the way, you're going to find you're going to find tons of guns. Like, there are millions of weapons in Borderlands. More weapons in that, this is no joke, there are more weapons in Borderlands than in every other game ever launched on the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 all added together. At the beginning, there's four character classes, but as you play that character, you'll develop it, both in the gear that you collect and how you equip it, but also in how you develop your skills. For example, one of the character classes is the soldier class, and you could specialize this in a number of different specs. One, uh, one spec, one specification is to focus focus on infantry, which is about becoming a master of arms, being able to use all of the different weapons effectively. Another spec for the uh, for the soldier is that of a support uh, specification, which is like, kind of like an engineer. This guy can throw down a shield turret, which both has a shield, defense, and a turret, which is offense. And that turret can be upgraded with machine guns and rockets. It can also be upgraded as a support tool, which can, like for example, heal you or regenerate ammunition for the you and your team around you. Uh, the the uh, the third spec for the the soldier is that of a medic, and a medic spec is really good at healing himself or healing his friends, even to the point where there's a special skill which can give you healing bullets. So you can shoot at your friends and actually help them, and that's kind of interesting. Um, and it's really great, like if you get a rocket launcher or something with an area of effect damage, because you can, if you have a, a buddy that's like sort of tanking an enemy, sort of taking all the blows, you can shoot that area of effect damage do damage to the enemy at the same time that you're healing your friend. If you want to respec your character, what you do is you go to any registration station throughout the world, and there's lots of them, they're all over the place. You go to a registration station, and that's the same place where you can you know, change your name, change the way you look, but it's also a place where you can choose to respec your character for a small fee, and the fee relates to how much skill you have, uh, you can you can respec. If you respec once or twice, it's, it doesn't cost you a lot. If you're respecing every 10 minutes, it's going to be pricey. <laughs> One of the great things about Borderlands is you can play by yourself, and it's an awesome game uh, to play alone. But at any time, and, and you know we like these games that blend role playing and shooting. Like we loved Fallout, and we love Mass Effect, and it's great to just immerse yourself by yourself in these worlds. But unlike any game that's ever blended these genres before in this generation, if you want to invite a friend at any time, he can just drop in co-op. And, and you can, or you, if you have a single console, you can play split screen, or um, or you can take your character. Let's say you're halfway through some of uh, some of the missions in the game, and you want to take your character and just join someone else online, like a friend that you, you that's already playing. You can take your character, join them in their game play with them, you'll get experience, you might level up, you might get some gear, all of that stuff is persistent with your character. So you can take your character then and go back to what you were doing and you'll be more powerful with all that stuff you've gained. And you can create as many characters as you like. So is it uh, split screen four player or just two player on a console? Two player split screen, four player networked, four player online. Very cool. Uh, now you guys did a major graphical overhaul on the game about midway through development or something like that. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, the um, our artists were insurgents. <laughs> No, really. That was a kind of a mutiny. These guys, we were, uh, we made the decision in 2008 to um, to we, the, the role playing blend with shooting was working. We were having amazing fun with this game, and so we made the decision to make the game bigger, to really invest in that. We added a character class. We made the world a large, connected world instead of a typical shooter linear world. We made it a large, connected world with a lot more freedom, um, but also a clear path, so you know what to do next if you're following the missions. We added a huge number of gear, a huge amount of gear and equipment. We jumped from like 500,000 guns that I originally announced to over 16 million weapons that we 
have today. I know it's sick. Um, and and we added a huge amount of content and um, and we made that decision and that and with that decision we moved the game to holiday of two thousand to October of two thousand nine. The artists were like, well, what are we gonna do? And a few of them um, they actually without me knowing about it they got together and they were looking at some of the early inspiration for the game, the concept art that was made to inspire the game and the attitude that existed, the personality and style that existed, and they thought we can do this in real time. We could render this crazy look in real time. And so they went for it and they didn't tell me they were doing it. And when I found out about it, I was like, dude, I don't know what you guys are up to but I'm shutting you down because we're already in production and then they showed me what it looked like and it knocked me on my ass it's the coolest thing I'd ever seen yeah it really isn't I'd never seen anything like it so I'm like oh my god I'm in I'm in and we, all, all, all we need to do is prove that we can manage the schedule prove that we can actually develop the content uh, the, the look was proven immediately so once we did a little production effort to understand that we could pull this off we went for it and we were all in if you're aiming at the guy in the chest and you pull the trigger and that bullet comes out and it hits the chest, you hit. That counts. The amount of damage you do, how effective that shot is, how much defense that guy has, that's based on his level, your level, the gear you're using, the skills, all of that. And you'll see feedback about how much damage you're doing. But whether you hit or not, that's your skill. And so it feels like a shooter. And that's because Borderlands comes from the shooter side, not from the role-playing side. There's other things too we didn't do. For example, a lot of the, a lot of the games that are role-playing games Frankly, I don't know, to me it's a little bit boring, but for some reason this gameplay has kind of emerged, it's called a dialogue tree, where you'll like talk to an NPC and you'll read a few paragraphs and you'll have a choice of a few things that you can respond with and you have to pick the right one and he'll respond and then you have, and you go down the right path and then he'll give you the key or unlock the path or whatever, or give you the object you need or give you the information you need. If you do it wrong, you gotta start over and play the flow chart right. I hate that. It's slow, it's boring. I think some of the narrative is good, but that's why I like to read a good book. You know what I mean? And I do love to get immersed in story, and we have great story in Borderlands, but I don't like that slow kind of uh, playing a flowchart gameplay. So we don't have any dialogue trees. And we have a lot of interesting NPCs, a lot of character and a lot of personality, and tons of great missions, all with really great writing and, and a humorous and, and, and engaging dialogue. But, uh, but it's not about a dialogue tree gameplay, it's about action gameplay, it's about fun. So with it being an open world game, you said that there are some, it, like, it, it guides you more linear, in a linear way, but it is still open world, you can go wherever you want. Uh, how, how does the story drive that, or how does that, like, how does that unfold? Are there, do you choose the missions you go on, or are there side missions, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, you always choose the missions you go on, and there's a main mission chain that, that sequences together, and at any time, you understand where to go to what, if you want to do the next mission. There's a, a, it's right on the compass. You can know exactly where to go, but also at any time, you're free to do whatever you want. You can just go off and wander off into the distance and like, oh, wow, look, there's a bandit camp. I'm going to take them down and steal their stuff, or holy crap, here's a little guy in an outpost, and it turns out he's got some jobs to do, and if I do them, there's some cool gear in it for me. Also, there's some information that might help me on my quest or something. So so, so there's there's all kinds of optional things you can do. In fact, there's more than three times as many side quests, side missions, optional missions than there are in the mainline story. So there's a lot to discover and do in the game. Very cool. Um, open world. Is there is there vehicles to help you get around? Or are you mostly on foot? How do you how do you get around in the world? The game layers. So at the beginning you're on foot and you can walk and then you can run. About three to four hours into the game, depending on how, how you play and what missions you take, you'll start a mission chain that will allow you to unlock the vehicle stations and repair them and get them up and running again. And when the vehicle stations are up, now you can actually materialize, almost like beaming in a, a car. And you can customize the paint job and the weapon loadout. And now you can drive around the world too. And that helps you get around faster. And that's great. Also, it's a great tool. It's a great weapon. You can you can road kill people. You can can shoot them with a rocket launcher on the back of the gun on the back of the car and your buddies can load up with you so you can drive together this is a lot of fun um, later in the game the, the transportation options even get more convenient um, where uh, you can power up the fast travel network and with the fast travel network every registration station you've ever visited in the game becomes networked together and you can immediately teleport around the world from registration station to registration station wow that's just incredible well we're really excited for the game like I said I got the chance to play it it feels very tight I'm um, ready for it to come out in, uh, when does it come out? October 20th on the Xbox 360, the PlayStation 3, and Windows PC. Wonderful. Well, thanks so much for your time, Randy. Hey, great talking to you. Awesome talking to you. Thanks.